Good morning, Venezuelan learners. Welcome to another session of your Disaster Readiness and Risk Reduction Subject. Today, we will deal with signs of an impending volcanic eruption and different volcano hazard maps. Before we begin, I would like you to type in your name, your section, and school in the comment box below. For today's lesson, you will be able to recognize the signs of an impending volcanic eruption and interpret different volcano hazard maps. I know that you are now excited and part to learn today, so let's begin. As a review, I want you to unscramble the jumbled letters to reveal the correct words about the volcano hazards. I will give you five seconds to type your answer in the comment section. Let's have the first word. Lava flow. Very good. Second word. Lahar, you are third word. Ash Paul, good job. Fourth word. Both in your guesses. Well done. And last number five. Volcanic Lanzla. Great job! Now, let us proceed with a new lesson. Early January this year, we experienced a devastating natural disaster, specifically in the provinces of Batangas and Cavite. Can you still remember what happened at that time? To help you recall the event, here are some of the photos taken during that time. Cars covered in ashes, domestic animals abandoned by their owners, houses and roads covered in ashes and mats. Many people were evacuated. High demand of face masks and lastly, Chino and Cat Bafloor got married. Can you now tell what happened that time? Correct. Taal Volcano erupted. It is difficult to forget what happened that time because thousands of people were affected and millions worth of properties of nearby cities and provinces were damaged. Can we lessen the effect of volcanic eruption? Yes or no? Very good. Yes, we can. But the question is, how? Of course, by heeding the warnings given by the government and knowing the signs of an impending volcanic eruption. As we continue, I want you to look at the pictures so you can recognize the signs of an impending volcanic eruption. I will give you five seconds to choose your answer from the words in the box and type it in the comment section. Let's have the first picture. Seismic activity. That's right. Second picture.
presence of that marvelous third picture. Volcano thermal energy. Absolutely. Picture four. Ground deformation. You got it right. It has this gas. This signs of an impending volcanic eruption. First, seismic activity. This sign described as having a normal increase in earthquake tremors near and under the volcano. Second, presence of gas. As magma nears the surface and its pressure increases, gas escape. Third, volcano thermal energy. Both magma movements change in gas release and hydrothermal activity can lead to thermal emissivity changes at the volcano surface. Fourth, ground deformation. This involves changes to a volcano's ground surface as swelling, sinking, or cracking, which can be caused by magma, gas, or other fluids, typically water, moving underground, or by movements, in the Earth's cracks, due to motion and a pulse. Fifth, sensory observation, which includes visual by observing premonitory events before an eruption, auditory by listening to or hearing rumbling sound, olfactory by smelling. Something like rotten eggs. Feel or touch by feeling ground movement and temperature increase. Taste in this sense ingestion of water contaminated with chloride or heavy metallic chemical can cause gastrointestinal upset and even death. Six. Geochemistry. By applying the science that uses the tools and principles of chemistry to explain the mechanisms behind major geological systems, such as the Earth's crust and its oceans. Seven, remote sensory. By relying to the detection by a satellite sensor of electromagnetic energy that is absorbed, reflected, radiated, or scattered from the surface of a volcano or from its erupted material in an eruption cloud. It is very important that we recognize those signs of an impending volcanic eruption so that we can evacuate on time and minimize injuries and casualties. It is therefore important to be able to monitor a volcano's activity, and this is normally done with the aid of different tools or instruments to monitor different parameters. Now, we are done recognizing the signs of an impending volcanic eruption. But is it already enough? Yes or no? Exactly, it is not enough. Because during this time, where a rough weather condition occurs, it is also important that you know the characteristics of the place where you are residing. In that you will be held to identify places that are prone to volcano hazard around the Philippines and or communities near you through different volcano hazard maps. Volcano hazard maps are visual, 
geospatial representations of locations that might be affected by different volcanic events both during an eruption. They are done by communicating a complex range of hazard assessment to those at risk or to those responsible for overseeing those hazards. Now, Look at this Philippine volcano map. Notice the red triangles. Do you know the information it gives? It indicates the active volcanoes in our country. Let's try this. Locate at least one active volcano near Valenzuela City. Comment your answer, then click the heart button once you're done. The active volcanoes near Valenzuela City are Mount Pinatubo and Taal Volcano. Amazing! Now you already know how to locate active volcanoes near Valenzuela City. That's great! Because another way to be ready is to know how to read and interpret information through the use of maps like this taal volcano ballistic projectiles hazard maps it shows that the pink areas are susceptible to ballistic projectiles while the areas with red outline are potential eruption bank and the light blue area indicate the lane or bodies of water. Another map is Taal Volcano Bay Surge Hazard Map. It displays that the orange areas are prone to bay surge, while the light orange areas are the buffer zone, and areas with orange outcome are the potential eruption beds. These are the maps issued by T-Box during Taal Volcano Island, designated as a permanent danger zone that time. To update the people living in Batangas in nearby places. To sum it up, we found out that the factors or parameters serves as an indication in observing and impending volcanic eruption are the following. Seismic activity, presence of gas, ground deformation, volcano thermal imaging, geochemistry, sensory observation, and remote sensory. And Hazard maps are generated for various uses and are most useful in determining risks of living in identified potentially hazardous areas. Hazard maps can also help people to become aware of specific dangers they might face in the event that a volcano reactivate. Now, I will try to answer some of your questions about volcanic eruption. I will be helped by our moderator, Mr. Dario Bayona, to look for your questions in the comment section. Next, we have the first question. Let me read to you. What is the meaning of the box? and its mandated responsibility? That is a very good question. TBOX stands for Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology. It is a service institute of the Department of Science and Technology that is responsible for forecasting volcanic eruptions and through appropriate detection, forecast and warning system and formulate appropriate disaster 
preparedness and mitigation plans. Good, we have another question. Where is the safest place to be during a volcanic eruption? Stay in areas where you will not be further exposed to volcanic eruption hazards. And avoid low-lying areas, areas downwind of the volcano, and river valleys downstream of the volcano because the breeze and ash will be carried by wind and gravity. If you have other questions, don't hesitate to ask your subject teacher during your follow-up discussion. That concludes our lesson for today. As a parting shot, let's take this piece of advice from a volcano. Stay active. Keep your inner fire burning. It's okay to let off steam. Go with the flow. Be uplifting. It's all.